Joe. Places, everybody. Get over there and flash them. Yes, sir. Places, everybody. Places, please, Miss Wallace. All right, she said, ring up. Places, everybody. Come on, you, James. Get the lead out of your oh, field. A few more hours of this will come dance on my head. Well, you asked for work, didn't you? Yeah, but I didn't ask all I had. Now, who could be sending me flowers? Yes, who could? These are for Miss Wallace, from the ball. The war is over. Well, it was a great battle while it lasted, but it'll take more than a basket of flowers to squirt. I'm glad I got a star and have him yell at me like that. That's right, girlie. Stick in the cause and he won't even speak to you. Say, if he ever howled at me like he did her, I'd call out the Marines. Yes, and you're the gal can do it, too. Name by name. Why, you... Places, everybody. Places. Going up. Thanks. Warning. Take it away. Miss Bedford, I'm here. What? Miss Bedford here? Miss oh. Bedford here. Mary's come home. Well, you tell her that oh, I... Uh, don't send her away. Please, sir, don't send her away. Please let her stay. Uh, well, all right. Show Miss Mary in. Down, sir, Colonel. Come in, Miss Mary. Come in, Miss Mary. Well, well, where is Miss Mary? Come on, Miss Wallace. Hey, Steve, what the devil do you mean by ringing up without Miss Wallace? I called her Mr. Hart, and the maid said, okay. I called her, too. I'll have her right here. Me, too. Miss Wallace, Miss Wallace, we're up to you. You're on, you're on. Come on, please. She said she won't come out. What? Miss Wallace, please, you're holding us up. We're waiting for you, please. Come on, Toot. Now, come on, Miss Wallace. All right, everybody. Pick it up once more from just before Miss Wallace enters. And remember, everybody, you're all dying to see her. Mary's come home. And she's lovely. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. All right, pick it up. All right, show Miss Mary in. Yes, come in, Miss Mary. <laughs> she won't come out. Oh, so she's been that one again, eh? Well, this time she won't get away with it. Take it easy, boss. Remember what happened the last time. I'm running this show. Relax, girls. It looks like a long, hard season. Pat. Wallace? Where's Miss Wallace? She was here, but she ain't here now. I know that, but where is she? You know, sir, when you and she had that terrible fight last night and you bawled out in front of the whole company, she kind of felt mighty bad about that. She kept feeling bad until she got home. And then she kind of felt better. I'm not interested in all that. All I want to know is... Where is she now? Well, sir, I've come into that. When she comes to the theater this morning, she felt good. But when she reminded herself how you bawled out last night, she felt bad all over again. I know that I bawled her out. I know that she felt bad and then felt good and then felt bad again. But now I know that we're having a dress rehearsal, and I know that my show must go on in a couple of days, and I know that Miss Wallace is my leading lady and that she's due on the stage out there right now and that she's not there. And what I'm interested in knowing is, where is she because she's not here? Yes, sir, I know that. But she can't be here and there at the same time. Here and where? I didn't say here and where. I said here and there. All right. Have it your own way. Here and there. But where is there? In the taxi cab. In the taxi cab? Going where? All right. There. But where is she going in the taxi cab? To the railroad station. You mean she's leaving my show? No, sir. She's already left. For where? To christen the train. To christen... 
Have you gone crazy? No, sir. I was telling you straight facts. She's gone to the railroad station to christen the new steam line train. But why does she have to christen that train? Because Mr. Arnold asked her to. Arnold? Who's Mr. Arnold? That's the man she's going to meet at the station. To christen the train? That and other things. What other things? Well, so you see, Mr. Arnold's that Santa Barbara man from California, and his folks live there. <laughs> so his folks live in California. But I'm asking you about Miss Wallace. I'm not interested in Mr. Arnold's folks. But Miss Wallace is. For what reason? <laughs> Lordy sakes, Mr. Hart, a girl's got to meet her in-laws sometimes. In-laws? Are you trying to tell me that Miss Wallace is married to Mr. Arnold? No, sir, but they're going to get married as soon as they get to Santa Barbara. Holy mackerel! Steve! Steve! Don't let anyone leave. Keep them here. I'll have Pat Wallace back, dead or alive. Either way is okay with me. I ain't so particular. Be right back. I'm sorry, but you can't get through without a ticket. Well, I don't want to ride in the train. I only want to talk to someone. Oh, that's what they all say. I'm sorry, but you can't get through without a ticket. That's a great idea. The one on the screen line. You'll right? have to get in line. Oh, but I want to get on board that train line. Sorry, but you'll have to get in line. Your name is Bradley. That's right, John Bradley. Cabins 8 and 10. 8 and 10? Yes. My husband must have a ticket. Can you tell me how I can get aboard? I'm Mrs. Bradley. Can you identify yourself? Oh, yes, certainly. My uh, card and my driver's license. That'll be all right. I'll pass you through. Terry. Yes, sir? Take Mrs. Bradley aboard the streamline. Her husband has the ticket. Thank you. Tickets for Gerald Wilson and Bride. There you are. Thank you. One on the streamline. Sorry, but we're all sold out. But I must get on that train. I'll give you the full price of the ticket just to get on for five minutes. I'd like to help you, but this is the inaugural run, and half New York's been trying to get through. Sorry, but you can't, can't get, get through, through without, without a ticket. ticket. That's right. Those are our orders. He's through to Miss Wallace on the streamline. Yes. If you want to see the new streamline, go right through the visitor's gate. Thank you. This veritable hotel on wheels will amaze you with its delightful upper deck, spacious cabins, broad corridors, and cocktail bar. In creating this epic of speed and efficiency, we feel we have marked a new era in modern transportation. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Now, folks, what can I add to what these gentlemen have already told you about this modern marvel of speed, beauty, and comfort? And speaking of marvel, here's Miss Patricia Wallace, who is going to assist us in the final ceremony. <laughs> Hello, Miss Wallace. Won't you say a few words, please? Hey, Pat. Pat Wallace. Oh, hey, shut up. We want you. you must forgive me if I don't say very much. You see, I'm on my way to California to be married. And I've made up my mind that from now on, my husband will do all the talking for the family. Thank you. Are you listening, Witchell? That's news. 
And now for the grand finale. You launch a ship, you dedicate a building, and you christen a baby. But for a train, well, no matter what you name it, Miss Wallace is going to crown the streamline with a bottle of champagne. You got a glass, you can join me. Uh, thanks, sir. Uh, I'll drink from the bottle. That's what I call a man. Stand back, everybody. Half a dollar? Sure. Come on, son. We'll play hide and seek. Pardon me. Yes? How soon does the streamline leave? Nine and a half minutes. Uh -huh. uh, did you say uh, uh, ten minutes? Nine and a half minutes. Streamline leaves at one shot. Thank you. Uh, Sonny, uh, where, where are you, Sonny? What's the trouble? My little boy, did you see him? Well, he was right here a minute ago. He must have gone through the gate. I'll go find him. Well, I, Sonny! Uh, you... Here I am! You shouldn't run away from your daddy. He is my daddy. Come on, Lug. Say, where's my money? Well, you don't deserve it. But here. Oh, Wilbur, where have you been? Look, Mama, he gave me 50 cents to go through the gate with him. He did, did he? Where were you trying to take my little boy? Now, wait a minute. I'll show you, you just a lady, please. Get her. Come here, kidnap her. Come here, Where'd he go? Hey, Oh, but I'd like to lay my hands on a mug like that. You and me both, I jam apart. I hope they nab him. The guy must be screwy trying to get away with a thing like that. Keep your eyes open. We might see him. I hope I don't. I ain't never killed a guy yet. I don't blame you. They're all a lot of rats. One guy ain't got no use for the kidnapper. All aboard. Streamline Express leaving on monorail at 1 p.m. All aboard, Streamline Express. All aboard. Where will I find Miss Wallace? Miss Wallace? Yes. Oh, yes, Miss Wallace. Uh, straight ahead, state room number four. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm terribly sorry. Excuse me. Pat Wallace, what do you mean by... Save your breath. I'm not going back. And don't tell me the show must go on. But it must. And it can't without you. Let the understudy go on. That disappointed Van Hart? Why, she's rotten, hammy, awkward... And she smells. That's right. Just what you said about me. Right in front of the whole company. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. I lost my head. That's what you've been doing for the past three years. I'm fed up with it all through. Look, Pat, you're, you're not sick or something, are you? I never felt better in my life. I know what I'm doing. Well, you certainly picked a swell time to take a train ride. Right in the middle of a dress rehearsal. Now, what about the actors? I left a check to cover their salary. Well, what about my play? What about me? I'm not interested in you. That's gratitude for you. I take you out of the sticks, put you on Broadway, make you a star, and what do I get? A quarter of a million dollars. No, a knife in the back. What a happy speech. Look, 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 Pat, let's stop this nonsense. What is it you want? More money? No, Jenny. I want to live, be human. I want a home. Pat, you're crazy. You can't play Mother Potts. Oh, can't I? Well, 24 hours after this train hits California, I'm getting married. Not while you're under contract to me. I'm going to get married and live in Santa Barbara. That's a one-night stand. You can't live there. But it's no use, Jimmy. I'm through. Why, Pat, you die. Don't you realize the theaters in your soul and all the pink teas in Santa Barbara can't wash it out? Just the smell of the grease paint. The old dressing room. Da, 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 da. I ought to punch you in the nose. Why don't you? Because I don't have to. You'll do as I tell you. 
No, I won't. You told me how to act, what to wear, how to breathe for the last time. Now get out. I never want to see you again. I hate the theater and I hate you. And I'm not exactly fond of you, but the show must go on and you're coming back. Leave my things alone. Put it down. Here. Here. No. And here. Uh, now come I, on. I won't. Come on. I won't. All right. Did you ring, miss? Yes. Throw this man off the train. Now? Yes. Now. This way, please. Uh, uh. You marry that guy over my dead body. That will be a pleasure. Do try to arrange it. All right. Come on, come on. Now, you got to get off before we start. Oh, give me just a few minutes, will you? No, if you're caught on the train, I'll lose my job. Your job? Do you want to make $100? No, I've made $100. 200, no kidding, no doubt. 500, right off the bat. Right off the train. 1,000. What? Dollars. Cash? Cash. What? I got an idea. Is this fair? Yes, and $1,000. I'll listen. All right, where can we talk? In here. Gilbert Landon. Uh, state room 14, Mr. Landon. There'll be a steward here in just a minute. Mr. Bradley, uh, state rooms 8 and 10. Mac, Mac, look, I've got to get away. My wife is sick. She's awful sick. I gotta go. Hey, wait a minute. It's all right, sir. The office sent me down to take his place. Okay. I hope it isn't serious. I hope not, thanks. Give this note to Steve at the Gaiety Theater. Tell him to hold everything. And don't worry about your job. I'll put you back to work. I'll have to make an actor of you. Thanks. Stuart! Stuart! Hey, you're the Stuart slug. Stuart! Hey, Stuart! Take those bags to 8 and 10. Yes, sir. Oh, just a minute, Stuart. You're making a mistake. That's my bag. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's quite all right. This way, please. Oh, uh, good. Uh, put that bag in number 10. Oh, Stuart! Thank you, sir. I beg your pardon. Aren't you in the wrong cabin? No. But this is Mr. Bradley's cabin. I am Mrs. Bradley. Oh. I beg your pardon. Are you happy? You know I am. That's the way I'll always try to keep you. By the way, here's a little something I picked up for you. A little something? Oh, John, it's gorgeous. But I don't want you to buy me jewels. I hope that's the only thing we'll ever fight about. Now, run along and let me unpack. All right, then.
No stops now till we get to Los yes, Angeles. But my wife must get off. Our schedule is New York to California without a stop. She'll have to stay on board. Uh, very well. Uh, will you get a stateroom for my wife? I'm sorry, but we're completely sold out. But you must have a room. I'm sure you will find that your room will accommodate both of you very comfortably. Uh, yes. Thanks. Well, folks, we're on our way. Zooming along at 150 miles an hour. I waved goodbye to a friend in New York in a perfect strange when Philadelphia waved back at me. Now, that's speed in any man's language. So long, folks. We'll be back on the air every hour to report this breathtaking race against time. New York to California in 20 hours. Will we make it? What if we don't? Oh, that would be terrible. Why terrible? Suppose we don't get to California for 21 hours. California will still be there. Oh, but I've got to get my wife to California as soon as possible. Don't worry, brother. I can't help it. It'll be all right. We'll make it. I hope so. Streamline Express, Pittsburgh calling Streamline Express. Streamline, Pittsburgh calling. Okay, Pittsburgh, this is the Streamline. The Streamline. Position report. Okay, Streamline on schedule. Present position. 34-2. Block 34, Division 2. 161. Speed 161. 6300. Wind resistance 6300, did you get it? Okay. Weather report, all clear to altitude. Log in the mountains. Pittsburgh, cloudy. That's all. Come in. Hello, darling. Hello. I just wired the family. Did you? Oh, you don't seem very enthusiastic about it. Oh, yes, I am, dear. I'm just a little tired. Oh, darling. Well, now, look here. You take things easily. Now, we'll have a nice, quiet little dinner, and then I'll see if I can scare up a bridge game. But I don't know how to play bridge. What? You don't know how to play bridge? Well, what do you do in the evening? I go to work. I have to be in the theater. Oh, Freddie. I've just realized it. For the first time in my life, I, I have nothing to do. Nothing to do? Why, you've got me to marry and bridge to learn. Yes, yes. I want to do all those things. That's fine. Why, you'll forget all about the theater in no time at all. Freddie, you'll keep me from missing it, won't you? Sure. Why, we'll build a little theater on our place. And if you get lonesome, you can act your head off. And I'll be the audience. I never want to act again. I couldn't after what I've done. I've let them all down. I let Jimmy Hart down. Horribly. The understudy can play your part. Don't be ridiculous. Nobody can play that part but me. Jimmy wrote it for me. He knows what I can do. He took me out of the sticks, put me on Broadway, made me a star. Well, what if he did? You've got to think of yourself sometimes. Can't go on being a... In Santa Barbara. You know, sometimes I don't understand you at all. Every day at 4 o'clock for six months, I've been asking you to marry me, and you say no. And yesterday afternoon, at a quarter to four, you suddenly say yes. And everything's roses. What's the matter, Pat? Are you sorry you left the show? And that fellow, Hart? That Simon Legree. That slave driver. I hate the sight of him. Yes, well, if I have to listen to much more about him, I shall hate him, too. You shouldn't. He's the one who convinced me I ought to marry you. He did? Well, I'd certainly like to thank the fellow. So would I. Let's send him a wire. Yes. I'll do it right now. Well, you know, this calls for a celebration. Let's have a drink. Sure. Yes, sir. Hey, wake up, will you? Number four is ringing. Number four? Did you say number four? It's a pleasure.
Come in. Oh, two minutes. Two champagne cocktails, please. Darling. Darling. Oh, yes. Do you spell contemptible with an I or an A? With an I, darling. That's a funny word to be putting in a wire of thanks. Yes. But he'll understand it. You're having a lot of trouble with that wire, darling. Yes, dear. It's worth a lot of trouble. Huh. You know, I'm so happy I think I'll get drunk. Do you mind? I'll go right ahead. I wonder what he's keeping that good. Just a 65 footer, your cocktail, sir. Oh, thank you. What are you doing on this train? I'm a steward, miss. Number 13, to be exact. Do you know this man? Why, I certainly do. He's uh, from the theater, sir. I was Mr. Hart's valet. Why, Jimmy Hart. Now, there you go again. I thought we agreed not to talk about that fellow. But you don't understand. I don't want to talk about Hart. Oh, but everybody talks about Mr. Hart. He's a famous playwright in a very... Brilliant gentleman, sir. Slave driver. A bit stern, perhaps. But underneath it all beats a warm heart. Warm heart? I tickled him in the ribs once and froze three fingers. <laughs> you say clever lines. That's from Mr. Hart's last play, sir. He always extended himself to give Miss Wallace his most brilliant witticism. So, you're a steward? Yes, miss. When the position presented itself, it seemed an excellent opportunity. So I accepted. Oh, you did, did you? Here, clean my shoes. Yes, miss. Here. I want these pressed. Yes, miss. These brushed. Yes, miss. Just cleaned. Yes, miss. Will that be all, miss? Are you... I Just feel... a minute, George. Darling, you forgot the wire. Oh, so I did. Will you send this, please? Twenty-two words. That will be, uh, three dollars. Yes, it's worth it. I don't doubt it. Thank you, miss. You forgot my clothes. Just a minute, Joy. Yeah. Thank you. Five years haven't changed you, but you're lovelier than ever. Five years haven't changed you either. You lie better than ever. <laughs> Same old Harry Thomas. No, no. The name is now Landon. Gilbert Landon. I'm traveling incognito. Any special reason? No, just leaving New York before it gets too hot. Doctor's orders? Well, as a matter of fact, my friend, the commissioner, thought it would be a good idea. 
suggested a change of climate. You know, all the best people go away in summer. Then this isn't a business trip. No, no, indeed. However, I wouldn't be averse to picking up a little business, if, if tempted. And you? Oh, I'm collecting material for a novel. So, and how are collections? Well, I think they're going to be all right. Just a minute, please. Come in. Miss Vincent? Yes? I'm Mrs. Bradley. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to make a scene. May I sit down? Why, oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Through no fault of my own, I'm forced to accompany you on this little trip. <laughs> Amusing, isn't it, for a wife to chaperone her husband while he's running away with another woman? Would you mind telling me just why you came here? I'd be delighted. When I first discovered this, um, shall we say, event, I was angry. Then I must confess I was curious. About me? Naturally. Well, now that you've seen me, Miss Stinson, have you ever been really in love? I'm in love now. Oh, I don't mean that kind of love. I Have you ever lived with a man, seen him off in the morning, listened to his troubles when he came home at night, sort of grown to be a part of him? Well, what of it? This, I know how much it takes to keep him happy. You're taking on quite the contract. And you don't think I'm capable of filling it? No, I don't. Well, you're wrong. And if you've come to ask me to give him up, I won't. I love John. And I'll do my best to make him happy. In that case, there's nothing more to be said. You don't look like a woman who would give up so easily. When a woman's husband makes up his mind to leave her, there isn't much a wife can do. He thinks you're wonderful. Please don't give him cause to think otherwise. This is a fine spot to be in, just as I had everything set. I thought you did very well. It's sheer genius getting a wife to say, bless you, my children. Well, there wasn't much else she could do but give him up. Suppose she hasn't. From where I sat, she sounded like a pretty clever woman. Oh, I think I can handle her. Yeah, I hope so. But if she ever learns the truth about Elaine Vincent, the party's over. Well, there's not much danger of that, unless... You're not going to do it, are you? Why, I never gave it a thought. Until now. Can you imagine that? A real business proposition right in front of my eyes, and I didn't recognize it. I must be slipping. Listen, Harry. I'm not as young as I used to be. This may be my last chance. You're not going to spoil it for me, are you? Elaine, oh, you're making it very difficult for me. Here I am, torn between sentiment and business. And you know I've always been a sentimentalist. But opportunity knocks but once. Oh, give me a break, Harry. You won't lose anything by it. After I marry him, I'll make it up to you. But suppose you don't marry him. Oh, I can miss if you'll only lay off. Oh, but that wife seems such a sure thing. I'll bet she'd pay plenty for what I know. Plenty. You can't do this to me, Harry. You've got to give me a break. I'll take care of you. Honest, I will. Look, this is all I've got. It's worth 5000 easy. Don't, don't. Oh, please take it. Please take it, Harry. I don't want that. I'll give you more after I'm married. Please take it. All right. If you insist. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. But really, I had no intention of telling his wife anything. Here you are, one Manhattan and three martinis. 
I'll have the same. One Manhattan and three martinis. Getting lovelier all the time. Oh, wait till you see the orange trees. That's Pasadena. Pardon me, Miss Wallace, a radiogram. For me? Yes, it's an answer to the one you sent. How do you know that? I recognize the handwriting, sir. Handwriting on a radiogram? <laughs> uh, a bit of a joke, sir. Huh? Uh, pardon me, is it from Mr. Hart? Yes. The man's gone crazy. Why, what is it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, no, you didn't. Why does he want to punch me in the nose? Is he in love with you? No. No, sir, I'm sure that he isn't. Well, what's he angry at me for then? Because you know. took Miss Wallace out of his show. Oh, oh, I see. Well, he can't stop us getting married. Oh, I don't know. He's crazy enough to try. Well, let him. I can do a little nose punching myself. Well, I wouldn't uh, try it for you, sir. You see, Mr. Hart was intercollegiate life heavyweight champion. You saw the medals he won, didn't you, Miss Wallace? Yes. There were a lot of them. Well, I don't care how many. I'll knock his head off. Really? Yes, and if he were here, I'd do it right now. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. I'll send him another wire. Shall I get you a blank form? Yes. No, thanks. I'll get it myself. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Pardon me? Isn't this Mr. Arnold's cigarette case? It's too bad. I thought she'd gotten over it. What? What's that? Uh, an advertent slip of the tongue, sir. Well, go on. Tell me about it. Oh, I'd rather not. Now that lovers come into her life, maybe she'll get over it. Well, go on. Go on. Tell me about it. But you mean to tell me that Miss Wallace is a trifle absent-minded? That's all, sir. Oh, good heavens, man! Do you mean she actually takes things? I wouldn't that worry about it if I were you. We never did at the theater, and we always got everything back. Oh dear! Did you think I ought to oh, do no, something? No, 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 no! I wouldn't, sir. We tried everything. Now, when they dismissed her from the asylum, sir, what? It's quite all right. No cause for alarm. It was a private asylum, sir. Oh, dear. Here she comes. I wouldn't say anything to her about it. No, 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 Oh, Stuart. Yes, sir. Uh, one dry martini and one Manhattan, please. Just a minute. Isn't that Miss Benson? Yes. Stuart, ask the young lady in the doorway to join us, please. Yes, ma'am. Mary, uh, what are you going to do? You'll see. I beg your pardon. Mrs. Bradley would like you to join me. Mrs. Bradley? Yes, miss. Miss Vincent, uh, this is... Uh, oh, we've met. Really, John, I... I... Miss Vincent, I asked you to join us because, well, just to keep up appearances. I'm sure we'd all rather avoid a scandal if possible. Of course. Well, that's right. Bacardi for Miss Vincent. Yes, sir. I have no intention of interfering with your plans. Of course not. Your being here was just an accident, I suppose. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the, the train started before she could get off. How unfortunate. I mean, it must be so inconvenient to be here without suitable clothes. Oh, I'll borrow some pajamas from John. This may be amusing to you, but it is not to me. 
Why? Well, you act as though you were the outraged wife and, and I the other woman. Well, it's practically that. John has decided to leave you. So why don't you leave us alone? Oh, the shoe does hurt when it's on the other foot. Well, John was my husband. It was quite all right for him to buy you jewels. Oh, don't try to hide it. I know all about it. Where is it? I don't know. I, I had it just a little while ago. Well, perhaps you left it in your stateroom. Scotch and soda, please. Uh, do you want me to go and look for it? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm sure I had it when I left the room. Um, I must have lost it. I beg pardon, uh, but is there something wrong? Yes, uh, Miss Stinson has lost a diamond pendant. Did you look in your uh, stateroom? Think that. Are, are you sure you didn't put it somewhere? No, I, I, I didn't take it off. I know I had it when I left my room. And you came directly here? Yes. Well, now, don't worry. If it's on the train, we'll find it. Thank you. Do it. Listen, a diamond pendant has been lost. You search the upstairs corridor. You take the lower. Yes, sir. You get back here as soon as you can. Yes. I, I beg your pardon, sir. Perfectly all right. Oh, bartender, let's see what the gentleman will have. Uh, I'll have a, a, a big glass of milk. Make mine. No, no, no. Never mind. Skip it. All right, sir. Look around in there. Yes. Take the right-hand side. I couldn't find it downstairs. Sir. Well, it must be in here. Take that side. Yes, sir. Just a moment, please. Would you mind waiting here a little while? But I've got to get this milk to my wife. She's a very sick woman. I'm sorry. It'll only take a few minutes. You see, a valuable diamond has been lost. We've searched all the corridors, Mr. Bradley, and though we haven't found anything yet, they seem to be having some trouble back there. If they don't find it, do you think they'll stop the train? I shouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, they can't. I've got to get my wife to California as soon as possible. Hey, conductor. Conductor. I've got to get back to my wife. If you think I have the jewel, why don't you search me? But I don't want to search anybody. Why not? I think it's a very good idea. No, no, no. Not that. No, don't do that. What's the matter? You acted so you and stole it. Not at all. Not at all. I suggest you search everybody. If there's a thief on board, you'll be protecting the rest of the passengers. I don't like to do it. <laughs> Naturally. Does anyone object? Why, no innocent person could. It's much better than having everyone suspicious of everyone else. Well, thank you so much. I've got to get back to my wife. Couldn't you start with me first? Oh, well, very well. Thank you. Sorry I detained you. Do you mind? Mind? At all. Thank you. May I? Sure, go ahead. Oh, don't do that. I'm ticklish. <laughs> Wedding ring. Say, while you're at it, will you see if you can find my bride? Stuart, come here. Where are you going? Order for number 15, sir. Just a minute. All right. Eeny, eeny, mighty boy. Eeny, 
really my devotee. Oh, pardon me just a minute. One sure. of these is mine. Go ahead. Do you, do you want to play? Yeah, may I? Sure, go ahead. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Thank you. All right, that's all. Pardon me, sir. Steward. Yes, sir. You're a new man, aren't you? Yes, sir. He's taking Smith's place. Oh. What happened to Smith? He was called home. His wife's sick. That's too bad. That's all, Steward. So Smith's wife is sick, huh? Yes. I've known Smith for about nine years. And he hasn't got a wife. I thought that new man was acting funny. He's been sneaking around ever since he got on board. Keep your eye on him. He may be in on this. Yes, sir. Take it easy, old man. Everything will be all right. Oh, Stuart, uh, bring my instrument to my stateroom, and I'll need a lot of boiling water. How is she, doctor? Uh, what the devil do you mean by bringing a woman in her condition on board a train? But I had to. See, my uncle in Los Angeles died last Friday. Well, what's that got to do with it? But he left my baby $10,000 in his will. Well, if you're in such a rush to get the money, couldn't you leave your wife at home? Well, not very well. You see... The baby won't get the money unless it's born in California. Oh, I see. Doctor, do you think it'll be in California? Well, right now, it looks more like New Mexico. Oh, thank you. Doctor, is there anything I can do? No, I think you've done enough already. You don't want to be alone at a time like this. Come along with us. Do you mind? I'm scared. Of course you are. I know. It's a sort of a helpless feeling. Something you don't forget. Eh, hey, Mary? Yes. Something you don't forget. Do you have a son? Yeah. Great kid. Oh, John. What I want to hear. You know, I'm awfully proud of that boy. I'll bet he's proud of you, too. Yes, I suppose he is. That's a good idea. Why don't you have some dinner with us? Oh, I don't want to. I can't eat. Oh, it'll make it feel much better. Really, boy. Oh, oh, Stuart. Stuart. Then why the police to meet the train in Los Angeles? What of it? Well, they might find dependent on us. Nonsense. She hasn't got it. Didn't they search everybody? Yes, but you might have hidden it when you went to send their fire. Maybe you're right. Something must be done. Mm. Supposing I were to speak of it. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's a very delicate matter. Yes, 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 of course it is. 
Look here. You've uh, been through this sort of thing with her before. Supposing you talk to her. Oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, oh, oh yes. no, I couldn't. I couldn't talk to her. Uh, please, it's a favor to me. Well, if you insist. Oh, yes, yes. Well, is she? She's right in here. <clears throat> Good luck. Well, what do you want? Well, I... I, uh... I've come to make up the bed. But I don't want to go to bed. I haven't had my dinner yet. That's it should be. All Santa Barbara wives go to bed before dinner. Is that so? Oh, yes. And that, of course, taps to be Rotarian dinner. In that case, the husband's... Freddy's not a Rotarian. Well, this is no time to argue. I have my bed making to do. What have you done with it? With what? With the bed. I haven't got it. Come, come, I'm not so easily fooled. Probably lurking about somewhere. Oh, it's not in there, I know. No, it's, it's not in there. Well, I can't find it. Do you mind sleeping in the bathtub? I'll worry about that later. Good night, Stuart. Oh, I couldn't possibly think of going if my work undone. Why, what would the purser say? With me, my work comes first. With you, it's different. So there you are, you silly juggins. Is this a social call? Or did you come to make the bed? To make the bed, madame. Well, do it and get out. Early to bed and early to rise. My, how I envy you going into a life of ease and comfort. No more long rehearsals. No more opening nights. No more hanging around Lindy till the wee hours waiting for the reviews to come out. No more... Oh, that way, stupid. Here, I'll do it. I'll do my own work. Any sap can make a bed. Any sap doesn't seem to be able to. Well, perhaps two saps are all better than one. Don't you dare call me a sap. Then you call me one. You get out of here. Not until I've made the bed. Let go of that. I won't. You let go of it. Let go just long enough for me to hit you. With you. If you do, I'll sue you. You would, you chiseler. Oh! 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 You knocked me down, you fool! You fell down, you crybaby. Why, did not you knock me down? You're going to pay for this. Well, before I do, you're going to get what you deserve. Oh! 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 This is the end! This is the end, oh! and I'm going to pound some sense into you. Not that way! Yes, this is the only way to make you understand oh! that I've had enough. That I'm the boss. I mean when I say oh! that I love you. Uh, love you. I love you. Oh, Pat, I do love you. Why didn't you say so before? Well, how could I? I just found it out myself. And I've loved you all the time. Oh, you angel. Darling. Oh, Jimmy, you do love me, you do. I guess I always have. But I didn't know it. Oh, Pat, don't ever run away from me. I can't lose you. Don't ever leave me. Oh, I love you so. I'll, I'll never leave you. Oh, but Jim, I'm engaged. You mean you were engaged? Oh, that's right. I was engaged. We'll get married right away. On the train? We'll stop the train. Don't be silly. All right. As soon as we get to California, we'll get married. Well, that's all that matters. And then we'll go to Honolulu on a honeymoon. Oh, that'll be heaven. Oh, Pat, we haven't got time for a honeymoon. As soon as we get married, we'll hop on a fast plane right back to New York. We can get there without delaying the opening of day. Gee, it's worked out great. Well. You understand? I understand. Perfectly. You get out of here. Darling. Don't you darling me. You'd get me back in your show even if you had to marry me to do it. So get out of here. What? What? Pat? Get out. What? No. How did you make out? Out. Huh? Out. Out. It was all right for a while and then she went. Oh, oh yes, I understand. Well, what are we going to do about that? That's just what I'd like to know. 
Look here, old man. Will you see her again tomorrow? You really think I ought to? Oh, sure, sure. Well, if you insist. Thanks. Thanks, old man. You're a pal. Stick to it. <laughs> Bidding you good morning. We're still shooting at that speed record, but it's more than a race against the clock. That old bird, the stork, has been following us every inch of the way. So stand by for his own. Well, any news? No. Why don't they tell us something? Do you think anything could have happened to Margaret? No, of course not. Mrs. Bradley will tell us if there's anything wrong. Come on, buck up. We'll soon be in California and everything will be all right. You know, I don't want that money for myself. I never had anything. I want my baby to have a chance. I quit my job. I sold everything I had, everything I owned, just so he could have a chance. Mr. Jones, congratulations. You're a father. How's Margaret? She's all right. You can see her in a few minutes. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm a father. I'm a father! I'm a father. What is it? Shh. I'm a father. Amazing. What's the matter? I'm a father. That's all right. I won't tell anybody. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? What's that? Where are we? We're on the streamline. Oh, no, no, no. I mean the train. Where are we? Arizona. Arizona. Oh. Tough luck, old man. Uh. Arizona. Good morning, Mr. Lyon. Oh, good morning, Bertha. Going to breakfast? Yeah. Let's do it. Make up Shannon's room. Vincent. Yes? I know where your pendant is. You know? Yes. I can't tell you about it here, but I'll see that you get it back. What did you do with the pendant? It's quite safe. Why? It's hot. The police are going to meet the train. Isn't that just ducky? The moment the police come in, I become suspect number one. You wouldn't want that to happen to me, would you, dear? Give me a break, Harry. Look, there's only one person who can get that pendant off this train without being searched. Really? Who? Me. 
Getting smart? I'm not trying to cross you. Honest, I'm not. It's our only chance. I'll give it back to you and more if you'll only give me a break now. How could I refuse an old friend? We are old friends, aren't we? Of course we are. Then let's keep it that way. I'll get it for you. What the devil are you doing here? So, you're the... You crook! Conductor! Waiter! Somebody! Anybody! I've got him! Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. You took one too many steps. Gotcha. Here, here! What's this all about? There's your jewel, and there's your thief. He tried to hide that in that tube of shaving cream. You're a liar. I found it in your shaving cream. My shaving cream? Gentlemen, I ask you. This is the cream I use. Look, it's still moist from this morning's shave. I told you to keep an eye on this man. Come on, I tell you, I can do it. Now, just listen to me, I'll tell you how it happened. No, no, don't. Don't say anything till you've seen a lawyer. I'll get you the best one in California. Why, do you know this fellow? Uh, yes, well, uh, that is, he was a valet to a friend of mine. Uh, I can vouch for him. But I've got to turn him over to the police. Now, don't, don't, don't worry. I, I'll stand by you. Just don't say a word. The only thing that I've done is wrong with you is his shaving well, cream. I'll take care I came in to make up that bed. None of take that pose, conductor. The man obviously stole that pendant. What's all the racket about? They caught the steward. What steward? Well, you know, the fellow that used to be hard salad. The, uh, number 13. So they found him out. Good. Maybe that'll teach him to mind his own business. But they'll put him in jail. Fine. That's where he belongs. Oh, but my dear, we've got to get him out. Why? Now, look here, darling. I don't blame you for anything. Well, why should you? We'll get the very best doctor we can find. Who's sick? Well, uh, you are. I've never felt better in my life. Oh, oh well, perhaps we'd better see a doctor anyway. Have you gone crazy? I don't know. I think perhaps I have. Oh. Where are you going? Well, to wire for a lawyer. But you just wanted a doctor. Well, that was for you, dear. Then who's the lawyer for? Well, for the steward. Freddie Arnold, if you get him out of this, I'll never talk to you again as long as I live. Oh. Oh. I'll be stopping at the Ambassador. You can get me there if you need me. Thank you, Mr. Lenton. Sorry you were inconvenienced. That's quite all right. Lock him up in the baggage room. You're making a terrible mistake. I'm James Hart, the playwright. Make it Shakespeare and I'll listen to reason. But this is silly. You've got to believe me. I can prove it. How? Ask Miss Wallace. She worked for me. Get Miss Wallace, please. Yes, sir. Now you'll find out who I am. Did you send for me? Is this the jewel you lost, Miss Minson? Where did you find it? Mr. Landon here caught this steward with it. Thanks. You don't know how happy this makes me. I can very well understand that. Do you want me? Do you know this man? Yes. He's a steward. And I might add, a very bad one. The service has been abominable. That's just it. He's not a steward. Do you know who he really is? No. I never saw him before in my life. Pat, this is no joke. I'll say it's no joke. You'll get ten years for this. Ten years? Maybe twenty. Twenty? Oh, Jimmy, darling. What are they trying to do to you? They're trying to put me in jail. But who cares as long as you love me? Miss Wallace, 
course I do. He's Jimmy Hart. So you're Jimmy Hart? Yes. A fellow that wanted to punch my nose. I've changed my mind. What's all this got to do with who stole the pendant? Plenty. He did. Why on earth should he want to do a thing like that? To prove that you're a kleptomaniac. Could I'm a kleptomaniac? He said that you take things, and to make me believe it, he stole the pendant. And when things got too hot for him, he tried to conceal it in my stateroom. He couldn't have taken it. Why not? Because when I left Miss Vincent's stateroom, she was wearing the pendant. I came directly here, and that man waited on me. When Miss Vincent came in a few minutes later, she didn't have it on. I told you I found it in his shaving cream. Well, Mr. Landon. I'm sorry, old girl, but from here on, it's every man for himself. Shall I tell them why you gave it to me? Just tell them that we were old friends. Let it go at that. Well, I guess you don't want me around here anymore. Cheerio. I'm sorry, John. I'm not. It was a lucky thing for me to call this train. What? That's quite all right. Pat, he must love you an awful lot to go to so much trouble to keep you from marrying me. Stuart. Who, me? Yes, you. What do you want? I want you to give Miss Wallace, your very best personal attention. Yes, sir. On a honeymoon to Honolulu. Oh, we haven't time for a honeymoon. Mr. and Mrs. Hart are catching the first plane back to New York. I wouldn't hold up your new play for all the tea. In uh, Santa Barbara? <laughs> no, in the whole world. Where are we? Where are we? California. <laughs> What's the matter? I'm a father. Oh, you knew that before. Oh, but you only know the half of it. My wife just had another baby. Drink for everybody. Come on, bartender, pour them up. That's <laughs> all excitement. I just had twins. It's mine the same. Uh, 